So this week's discussion is on making EA resolutions. And I'm J.D. Bauman. I'm the director here at EA for Christians. So a quick recap, what is effective altruism? Uh, I think we all here know EA is an idea and it's a community focused on using evidence and careful reasoning to figure out the very best ways to improve the world and then acting on that basis. This is EA for Christians. We're a global community of Christians committed to serving others as well as possible, drawing on ideas from effective altruism. We inspire and equip others to do likewise. So a quick roadmap for the next 10 minutes. I'd just like to talk about areas for EA resolutions. And for some of these areas, just giving uh, maybe some, some tips or some guidelines about how you might think about doing this. Uh, and then I also wanna just briefly touch on other resolutions, just mindful that EA resolutions are not the only, the only resolutions you, you might wanna care about. And I'm keeping in mind this rough sort of heuristic smart goals. This is probably review for, for all of us or most of us, but the idea is that when you set a goal, you should be really specific with that goal. You should try to set something that's measurable in some way where you know um, what success looks like. Uh, it should be an attainable goal. It shouldn't be completely unrealistic. Uh, and it should be, it should be uh, t time bound. So we should know when uh, we, we would or wouldn't achieve this goal. So I want to start out with one of the main types of EA resolutions, uh, which is giving. Effective altruism is in large part about effective donations and effective charity. And there's a lot of different kinds of resolutions we can set around giving. And I, the whole point of setting a resolution is so that this meme doesn't happen to you. I don't know about you, but I love the, the New Yorker memes uh, or the New Yorker cartoons. And uh, it's so funny now with these with all these online donations and Facebook fundraisers, um, it's easier than ever to donate to charity. And uh, instead of doing it kind of haphazardly, uh, it's in my view, best to just set a resolution and to have some kind of procedure uh, instead of butt dialing or butt donating a charity. But if you are gonna butt donate to a charity, please butt donate to my birthday, uh, birthday fundraiser to Against Malaria Foundation and that will be uh, available for donations until a couple of days from now. So thank you for any of you who donate there. Uh, in any case, even not through my, my uh, fundraiser. So there's a couple types of resolutions you might kind of set for yourself regarding giving. I'll just run through these. One is maybe a, a lump sum donation where you think to yourself, oh, it would be really exciting to donate a certain amount of money to a certain charity. And you get fixed with that idea. Um, and for me, it's very easy to visualize the good that would come about by donating to AMF. We know that for every four and a half thousand dollars, roughly, the number keeps going up. <laughs> but right now, about four and a half thousand dollars we donate to Against Malaria Foundation, we prevent one death uh, from malaria. So you might think, oh, wow, it'd be really exciting if I could save um, one tenth of somebody's life through my donations this year. So I would love to just donate in one lump sum $450 to AMF. You might also think about it in terms of uh, everything above X number of dollars per year I wanna give away. I know Jason Dykstra has set an amount somewhere around 50,000 uh, that he keeps for him and his family uh, and the rest they, they save and, and give away. So maybe you could prayerfully think about this year. What's a, an amount that would be acceptable for, for me to keep. Um, we know that everything we, we have is God's, everything belongs to God. And, uh, but at the same time, we, we, we do have genuine needs and God knows that we, we need these things. So yeah, ask yourself now, like what, what, what kind of, what kind of resources would it be okay um, for me, for me to spend on myself and my family this year? Uh, and what is God calling me to do in that area of my life? Another way to think about resolutions is to think about it in terms of some percentage of total income or total wealth. I just graduated from college and while I was in college, I was not earning uh, a very large active income, um, had some side jobs, was able to give through that. But uh, on the whole, most of my, <laughs> most of my total money just kind of stayed the same paying for school and um, not having much, not having much cash flow coming in. So 
one thing that giving what we can recommends for students is to give some percentage of total wealth, uh, say 1% of total wealth while in, while in school, uh, instead of some percentage of, of total income. Uh, and I also think now that I'll just go ahead with giving some percentage of total income in the future. I think that's easier to track than some percentage or some um, amount over some fixed $50,000 or something. Uh, it's much easier to just automatically deduct like a certain percentage of my, of my monthly salary. So maybe that works for you as well. So think about that. What, what might be that percentage? And then another approach is this sort of patient giving approach, which is about contributing um, regularly to some sort of fund or tax preferred fund, like a donor advised fund until a later date, and then amassing uh, quite, quite a bit that you could use to seed fund some important project or, some, or given some large uh, substantial amount to some charity. So this is something you can think about, what, you know, what do you want to give towards or build towards, not just in 2022, but uh, all the way through the rest of this decade. So a part of me, when we talk about budgeting and personal finance, uh, reminds me of my past where <laughs> I would be kind of hesitant to look over what I spent over the last year, uh, because I'm afraid to see if I <laughs> spent more than, than I feel comfortable with. And so there is a part of me, and I think this meme kind of captures uh, this, this psychological tendency that a lot of people share, which is um, this feeling that, oh, I don't want to set a budget because if I don't set a budget, I'll never be over budget. But better budgets and better finances mean more money to give away uh, and more people that we can help through that. So there's a lot of apps and resources that can help you do this better. Uh, and I just want to list a couple of my favorites. So regarding to personal finance, which relates to budgets, and by the way, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, there's a really good blog in the ADK Hours website written by Benjamin Todd about common investing mistakes in the EA community. <clears throat> we talked about this um, about half a year ago. And some of these investing mistakes were like um, not saving enough for retirement, um, not investing risky enough in terms of... <clears throat> in assets that provide high annual returns, like um, stock indexes and so forth. Uh, so I'd recommend you check this out. I can share this uh, link with you if you're interested. Though I think this covers mostly at uh, like a basic to intermediate level, uh, what, you, what you would find anywhere else uh, for, for good uh, investing advice. And on budgets, uh, there's a great blog from Julia Wise where she talks about effective altruism and the good life. And she tracks her budgets for several years as a, um, as, as a mother of, of two or maybe three children now. And what that's been like going through uh, stages of life with different needs uh, and still this desire to give a lot away. So she gets in the nitty gritty of, of what it's really actually like to, to have a budget and to, to give away. Not many people are, are tracking this in the EA community, it seems, or not many people are sharing it. Uh, and it takes a lot of vulnerability, of course, to share your, your personal budget. But um, there's, a, there's a lot of, well, there's resources from her and there's a lot of budgeting apps you can use nowadays to help you budget better. Mint is one that I'm interested in, um, in using in the future. Up to now, I've just used spreadsheets and uh, we can talk more in the future uh, or after this intro about what might work well for you. And then just real brief, uh, in terms of setting resolutions, I think the, the if you haven't done this before, and I, I think I'm preaching to the choir, I think uh, most all of you have done this before, uh, but you really need to track expenses first since we often spend uh, something very different than what we thought we spend, uh, and then later decide how much we would like to, to limit ourselves to, and then distinguish between what spending is essential and, and not essential. I'm really deceptive with myself. I, I tend to think that certain things uh, I need to have, certain expenditures are essential, and it isn't until I talk to my fiance or my, my parents or close friends that I realize I don't really need these things. I just want these things. And I'm really good at self-rationalizing -rational about why I need these things. Um, 
and prayer is, is a great way to, to set my heart straight uh, with this as well. And then when you decide what's acceptable to keep, you can uh, use that as some sort of baseline to figure out how much to give away. Um, also, what yeah, whether that's a percentage or a lump sum or everything above a certain amount. Also, decide where you'd like to invest uh, in yeah, investing what you're saving. Set deadlines for all these choices and hold yourself accountable to whoever you trust to, to, to give you advice about these things. We've been running these next steps groups in EA for Christians where we share goals related to giving, related to career. And we've discussed these goals with each other uh, and held each other, I think, um, in, at least in my group, accountable in a very healthy way. So I would encourage you to, to, if you're interested in this, to join one of these next steps groups. Uh, so an example of this might be to just, yeah, if you realize that you spend roughly 30,000 a year or maybe a bit above that and you limit yourself to 30,000 a year, you might say, oh, I'll invest 6K in a government savings account, maybe a few thousand in a personal savings account and give everything above that away. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to fly through this. Uh, career resolutions is a whole nother area and you can definitely check out 80,000 hours. They give good broad advice. But my view is that if, you know, everyone's life is so complicated and everyone's career is so context dependent. So get context dependent advice. And uh, this is going to mean looking at your unique talents and interests, your values, your culture, your personality, um, and also looking at your industry, right? So given your industry, your company, your specific role, what would it look like to um, to advance in your career, to take higher impact jobs, to take jobs that might do more direct good or pay more. And maybe ask yourself when you're thinking of resolutions for this year, uh, what other work could you try out that might be much more impactful than what you're doing right now? Uh, and who would you have to talk to to learn more about that or to try that out? So uh, maybe just think, yeah, about some specific people who you would want to talk to by some certain date or some conference you'd want to go to to explore moving into some new space. And then you might also want to just set a resolution for researching about certain new cause areas or certain high impact charities or other career opportunities. And of course, these aren't the only important things I think of. Um, I think of my life in terms of seven different dimensions. I think of family, friends, hobbies, uh, health, which includes diet and exercise. I think of spiritual life, uh, which includes prayer and just closeness to God. Uh, I also think of work uh, and EA tends to focus a lot on the work and the giving aspects of life and less so on these other aspects. So as we move, move on to breakout rooms, I'd love to hear if you have any exciting resolutions for 2022. Uh, and this first question has to do with EA resolutions. And then I'd also love to hear if you have any other exciting resolutions that aren't EA, maybe relating with friendships or other aspects of life, if you feel comfortable to share. And I'd love to hear uh, how realistic these goals are for you uh, and what might help you to keep these goals. 